Welcome to Mysteries of Superstition Mountain. I'm Larry Hedrick, where we bring the past into the present for our future viewers. Today we have another great story by Hank Sheffer. As we've seen in some of our other episodes, uh, we've talked about Apache land and we've talked about Apache Junction. And in those episodes, we've talked about the Dutchman, we talked about Apache land, uh, bringing celebrities into town and filming into town from Hollywood. And we talked about the hotel that was built so they'd have a place to stay and it, it would draw people in from all over. Uh, and it became a destination much like Scottsdale had. And then we talked about a baseball team of all things and the Geronimo Stadium that was built right here. And come to find out that Bill Creighton was involved in a lot of those, those schemes to bring people into Apache Junction. And it must have worked to a point because by 1970, from 1960 to 1970, the population had risen to about 2,400 people from 200. So he was doing something right. But Bill wasn't finished yet. He still had one more to go. And as we've seen, the early 1960s were really busy with things going on in Apache Junction. The last thing that he had in mind was a fellow by the name of Doby Doc. Now, Doby Doc, you say, is who? Well, Doby Doc is our Las Vegas connection. He was a fellow who had, who had a tremendous collection of old, old trains and old cars and guns, you name it. Uh, apparently, he had about three million dollars worth of it because that's what we bought. I say we as Apache Junction or Superstition Mountain Enterprises, Inc. And what had happened was Doby Doc was in the process of selling this stuff. He was getting up there in age and he'd come over. He was the fella who had the last frontier village over in Las Vegas. And that was built at the El Rancho Casino Hotel which is arguably the first hotel that was built in Las Vegas. The whole idea of the lost frontier was it was a whole town and it was built to be very much like an early day Disneyland. In fact, it predated Disneyland by about 30 years. But at any rate, that's what he was doing. Now he's ready to get rid of this stuff and he's over here and we bought up all these trains. There were like 20 trains. No, that's wrong. There were three trains. There were 20 uh, automobiles. There were 30 to 50 wagons and there were buildings. There were drug stores. There were mercantiles. There were gun collections. This whole town was to be rebuilt in an area right near what used to be Bash's Plaza. Now, directly to the west of Bash's Plaza as we know it today, uh, right near where the, the <laughs> there's an oil change place there now, uh, and then there's uh, the BK Lounge. It was to be built back in that area, but this whole town was so big that some of the collections were taken and they would be displayed at Apache Land. Two of those gun collections were bought um, and they were moved out there to, to display them out there. The town was to do the same thing that it had done for the El Rancho. It was to draw people to an environment that was, of course now, Disneyland existed, so now there was another Disneyland where people could go and visit, and it was to be right here in Apache Junction. Well, Doby Doc was a fellow. It's interesting to know a little bit about him. He'd been collecting stuff from as long ago as 1917, and he'd collected all these things. Sometimes he wasn't all that kosher a young fella. He was known as a gambler. He was known as a miner. He was known as a crook. Oh, make that cook. 
He was known as any number of other things, including roustabout. Sometimes the way he acquired things was not all that reputable, but this is a time a long time ago and things were different then. It was the wild and woolly West. Doby Doc, who was actually Robert Claudill, was his actual name. Uh, he went by several different names. We never knew for sure uh, which name was correct on contracts in those days. And he just became known as Doby Doc because one of his enterprises had been that he built homes or houses out of, you got it, adobe brick. So he was called Doby. Now he has all this stuff and he has this ranch. And this ranch is a very huge ranch. The ranch itself was later sold to a fella by the name of Binion. And this is our Las Vegas connection because Binion was a fellow who was skimming money from one of the casinos out there. And he wound up very dead. Somebody, somebody killed him. They didn't like him very much and they killed him. But in the time that he was skimming all this money, it was supposedly hidden somewhere in a catch on this property that he had bought from Doby Dock. Now, Mr. Binion, Daddy Binion is dead, and Ted Binion is now taking over the ranch. And of course, if you go to Fremont Street, you'll see Binion's, it's still there. But Ted Binion actually found some of that silver. So there's another whole backstory there. But that's why I like to call this our Las Vegas connection, because we were doing some of the same things, not skimming off of the casinos, because we don't have a casino. But we were putting up, we were gonna put up a city just like Dobie had done before. And we were gonna build all these wonderful things to get people into Apache land. Well, it turns out when Apache land burned, those gun collections disappeared. I know where the drugstore went. That was bought by our very own drugstore cowboy here in Apache Junction. That's another story. And that, that collection still exists. The rest of the stuff because the town had not been built yet that they were gonna rebuild, was stored in a very large uh, barn affair or warehouse affair, if you will, out on King's Ranch Road. Just as you turned into King's Ranch Road, it was off in that field off to the Northwest there. Of course, today, we really don't know where any of this stuff is anymore. We've seen where parts of the collections were. We've seen where some of the collections were destroyed. We've seen where bits and pieces popped up. But for all intents and purposes, it just seems to have completely disappeared. Or maybe it's just another one of those mysteries of the Superstition Mountain. Thank you for watching this episode of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains.